lots of powerful come on had to make that pun at some point powerful new tools coming through for both makers and users in the wave 2 2023 release including some incredible stuff that is going on between bringing dataverse which is the piece that's sitting underneath model driven apps and dynamics 365 customer engagement even closer together with the Microsoft 365 tool set in a way that we never even would have thought possible. So this feature blows my mind. The ability to work with Dataverse data inside all of these different productivity apps. And this is a thing called Business Chat. Now, Business Chat was part of the Microsoft 365 co-pilot and announcement. I'm going to take you through it and explain to you what's now happened with bringing Dataverse in there. Incidentally, the idea that a co-pilot is grounded with something <laughs> is terminology that's used quite a lot. So this idea of it's the Dataverse is grounded with a co-pilot. I don't know if that's just me that thinks that's funny. So business chat here, this is inside Teams and we are initiating a conversation with co-pilot and here are some ideas of what it can do. I want to summarize things, catch up on this. So we can do things like this. When is the next monthly sync with this customer? And it's looking for my Outlook calendar items and finding those things so far so good now what are the recent emails and we saw in the initial copilot announcement from microsoft 365 we can say summarize all the recent emails with this customer and so on so you can start to bring together a whole lot of clever things but now we bring dataverse into the picture what are the recent opportunities for adventureworks and now it's hitting my dynamics 365 sales crm and bringing that in incidentally also with these little references footnotes showing where that data came from because responsible ai not just making stuff up and then how about i just don't even have to do the job of summarizing what's going on either draft an email for the sales team about what's happening so this productivity space and the way that the productivity tools are working with Dataverse, if you've got all that data sitting inside your model driven apps and Dynamics 365, this business chat experience of being able to search, summarize, find things is now all part of that. Dataverse is also getting a little bit closer with Power Virtual Agents. So we've already seen some announcements around Power Virtual Agents with a new feature called Generative Answers, where you can just put in your website or your SharePoint document library and chatbot done. You don't have to build the topics anymore. It's just using those things as its knowledge store. With this release, we now have Dataverse as an option to do that too. So that will mean that the bot will be able to leverage Dataverse data as some kind of knowledge base. It will only adhere to the security of what the person using the bot can access. So that's giving us another option there for creating bots without even having to create bots and using the data that we've got for the organization in another more useful way. Now, of course, Dataverse and model driven apps go hand in hand. And this feature, actually these next two features, because you know I've got to give you a two for one right this makes me very happy even though it seems like a fairly small thing enhancements to formula columns within dataverse and model driven apps we can create these columns that can do calculations so for instance we've got a, a warranty with a start date and then we want to say the end date should be three years after the start date and you want it to be automatically calculated the way we've been able to do this has been using this thing called calculated fields this is the ancient <laughs> legacy classic interface experience which is limited slow clunky let's move on we have now got this formula columns and this has been there for a while but there have been some gaps in it so essentially what we're aiming for with this feature is to bring that up to parity so it's addressing some things like creation of currency columns support for choice columns support for date and time with user local time zone in there so that now we will not ever need to use hopefully <laughs> the old currency columns again and part two of this one support for column level roll-up logic this is a concept called roll-up fields that are in there at the moment again that same clunky interface this has been the big gap that we haven't had with the formula columns i'm very excited to see this one thank you microsoft roll-ups is where you want to take a, a table that you're working with and calculate data from child records so let's say you have a a piece of equipment that's made up of smaller parts and you need to roll up all of the prices from the smaller parts to get a total those kinds of calculations are called roll-ups so can't wait to be doing that with PowerFX instead of the classic experience we are also seeing something really interesting going on here with having a layer within dataverse that can help you with data validation now 
at the moment you can bring in third-party plugins a lot of people do this for things like address validation and so on and this is the start of an exciting roadmap of things ahead the thing in this release and the first thing that's been announced is a basic email validation tool so if you are typing in something that's obviously a fake email address you know at test.com or something like this it will actually sort of pick that up and say yeah that's not valid that's a fairly basic starting point but the indication in this piece on the roadmap is saying that this is the first sort of test case towards doing this more intelligent layer across Dataverse to be able to handle that data validation. So I can't wait to see where that goes. Now, speaking of using AI for things, this is what happens when you use AI in PowerPoint. Uh, I put in Power Apps and it came up with this lovely pink thing. And honestly, I just, it was kind of irresistible, bit of a Barbie theme going on at the moment. So we've got to love that Power Apps. And the top feature I've got here around Power Apps is around using templates. Now I love templates because this gives you such a quick starting point. The blank screen is such a barrier to getting started. This is what we've got at the moment, the ability to create that three screen app. It's been there pretty much since the start of Canvas Apps. It's functional but mm, it's not winning any design awards is it? When I looked at the release notes and saw what these new templates look like, wow the, the screenshot is slightly blurry, sorry that isn't you, Look how amazing these are though. This ability to create a templated app that looks like this with the pie chart and the different colorful options and responsive layout that's going into mobile. So that ability for people who are makers who aren't those professional developers, they think about building their apps from the user interface in with all those reusable components and bits and pieces. Most of them aren't necessarily designers or having that skill. So putting more beautiful templates in their hands to get that job done more effectively and more beautifully. <laughs> this is a big win. And Copilot as well is getting a couple of features here. I've got two two for ones in here. Isn't this really like a top 12 or something now? So we've had a feature that came out. This was actually the first chat GPT feature I think we got on the platform when no one ever really knew that was what that was. Perhaps Ideas was this thing where you could get formula help built in. They've announced now that is actually going to become part of the Power Apps Maker Copilot, which makes enormous sense. Won't be terribly sad to see that Ideas name dropped. It was always mildly confusing. But also within the Copilot feature, at the moment you can do the describe the table to build it. Now we're going to see more things coming through and this is an evolution of more and more I suspect that's going to be added into that maker experience. So things like add a button, change my container to this, change the font size to this, change the gallery to connect to the account table, all of those kinds of things. So that no code experience, not even power FX anymore, but the ability to just describe what you want and have the copilot design the formula for you. If you are still working with formulas though, and obviously many people will be because some of the more complex stuff won't be handled by the copilot, this one is amazing. Better use of the screen real estate because that little formula bar, the Excel light formula bar at the top is great if you're writing one line, but as soon as you're starting to do anything more complex than that, you have to expand it out and it kind of takes over the spot where the canvas is. So we can move that to another place on the screen. It's going to be a much better experience for people working with those more complex formulas. On the AI builder side of things here, we've got a really cool feature about being able to transcribe speech to text automatically. So this is actually going to allow you to take audio from long calls or other things. Obviously, if you're working in Teams and using Teams calling, you're getting a transcript. But if your calling is coming in some other way or you're getting audio of some other kind, then the ability to use AI Builder to transcribe that will be there. This is something that's been in the underlying platform, the Azure Cognitive Services piece for a while. But AI Builder lifts those services out of cognitive services and puts them in the hands of the low code makers with this wizard style interface. So doing that speech to text for any maker is going to be possible. And then for the administrators, this will make you very happy in Power Automate that you will be able to manage bulk abandoned cloud flows. So where you've got people where people have left the company and their flows don't then have an owner, this is a question that comes up a lot about how to handle that. So we're going to have a process now, which means you don't have to do it by individual flows. You'll have much more visibility and control over those things and be able to do maintenance in bulk. And while we're talking governance, don't run away. <laughs> I've got a beautiful slide here to sort of capture your attention. 
if your default environment is something like this, like the default environment in Power Platform is something where everyone starts making all of that proliferation of building apps on SharePoint and other Microsoft 365 data sources happens there, but it can get completely out of control. And you also have very limited capability to control what's going on there because everyone is a maker in the default environment. This is a really sort of small but important feature is with the new managed environments capability in the platform, you'll be able to automatically redirect your makers into a developer environment where they've got the right tools and they're in a kind of a controlled space with the guidelines and the guardrails that you've set up, but you're not just getting everything kind of dumped in a complete mess in the default environment. You're starting to put people on that path towards things that can be enterprise scale. If you're interested in more governance content, let me know in the comments. It is something I do talk a lot about in my day job, but not something I've done a lot on the channel here. And if you are into Dynamics 365 and you love the Dataverse stuff, that all applies there too. And check out my video on what's new in the customer engagement release, some cool stuff going on with marketing and sales copilot over there.